Hi, that Paul guy. Uh, sometimes when I reach out for feedback and I try to find out if people are watching or if they have questions about videos or uh, they have questions about computer stuff, I get some feedback that people will sometimes like watching my videos, but they have no idea what I'm talking about. And that the subject matter or whatever I may dis be discussing is, is way over their head. So today we're going to take a step back and we got a friend of mine, Walter, here that's going to help us kind of clear some of those things up. Okay, so Walter here is a computer. I did a video of uh, putting him together, but Walter is going to a good home. And so we got to get a couple of things working on Walter. And I figured while I'm doing that, I might as well go ahead and, and sort of do a video and explain what the parts are of a computer, what makes it work like it does, and you know, kind of just kind of bring it back down to the basic building blocks and, and give that a go. And the people that, that have a little bit of confusion or they don't understand what I'm talking about all the time, now maybe we can get a little bit of a frame of reference and kind of let you guys know where, where we are and what we're talking about. I'm not gonna mention any brand names or I'm not gonna talk specifically about brand names or types of, uh, types of equipment, uh, like if it's a, an Intel CPU or it's a AMD graphics card or anything like that. We're just gonna talk about the basic stuff and we're gonna keep it that way so that we're not trying to confuse everybody. There, it's confusing enough without having to make it any worse. So the first thing we're talking about is a case. Now, the biggest enemy to a computer is heat. So you wanna make sure that whether you have your case, this in this case, I took, uh, funny. In this case, I took the side panel off. It's a clear side panel, it's, it's tempered glass, but I took it off so we can see inside a little bit better. And the biggest enemy, like I said, to any computer is heat. The more stuff going on, the, especially if it's got a large graphics card and, and a lot of things, you know, maybe you've got some lights in there and, and a, a, lot of, a lot of things, a big power supply or something, there's going to be a lot more heat generated. So you want to make sure that it's in a space where it can get open air. It, it can be sitting on a desk. I don't sit it directly on a floor. Sit it on top of something that's off of the floor. But you want to make sure it gets open air. You don't want to close it into a cabinet or anything like that because it, you will have problems eventually because, like I said, heat is a problem. So the case itself, in this case, um, this is an NZXT case. It's a very good case. And for medium airflow, which we're talking about using for this system, it's the perfect design. Uh, inside it here, you can see a motherboard. That's the circuit board. That's that big thing that's attached to the back wall here. And that's basically, that's the railroad. That's the pipeline where everything gets connected to and all the pieces get to talk to each other. And that's how everything gets done. You have the brains of the operation talking to the brawn of the operation, talking to the memory, and all that stuff kind of works together through the motherboard. It gets power from a power supply that I don't have disconnect, I don't have out, but it's underneath this part right here. There's a power supply that has a lot of wires that connect both to the motherboard and to some of the components, and we'll talk about that in just a moment. Now, this in this case, uh, there's something special about this computer. It does not have a separate graphics card, but we'll, like I said, we'll get to that in a moment. It does have a processor in it. All computers are gonna to have to have a processor. Now, this one is hidden underneath the fan, but I assure you there's one in there. This is the brains of the operation. It's the one that tells everything and tells everybody what to do and keeps up with everything. And basically, it is, um, it's the one that's gonna take over the world, okay? So that, that's, you can think of that as the brain if you're talking pinky in the brain type thing. Um, this is the, basically the brains of the operation. This keeps up with everything for you. It tells everything else what it has to do. So if this is the brains, the graphics processor is the broad. This is the one that, that shows you what is going on. This has outputs going to your monitor, so you can see everything that you're supposed to see when the computer is running. The games that are playing, the Word document you're trying to edit, the uh, email that you're trying to read, the website you're trying to look at, any of those things, those are all put on the screen by something like this, it's a graphics card. This one happens to be smaller. It's still pretty powerful, but it came out of a small form factor. It's a smaller computer, smaller case. And so I had to get something that would fit in there. And that's what this one is. You will see these range in different sizes. And the bigger they are, the more heat that's produced. A lot of times, the better they are, the bigger they are, but that's not always the case. But anyway, that's the brawn of the operation. 
Now these two, the CPU, the central processor, and the graphics processor are nothing if they can't remember what to do. So we have memory. And in this case, this is, a, this is a set that's going in another computer, but I do have a stick of memory that is in the motherboard near the CPU. A lot of times you'll see them right next to the CPU because they have to be close together so that you don't have a lot of time wasted in between when the CPU is trying to give instructions, the memory has to be there and go, oh yeah, here it is, here it is, here it is. Uh, that a lot of times when you load a program, there are things going to be kept in there so the CPU doesn't have to go looking all over the place and going back to try to look on the disk or online or on the hard drive that we'll get to in just a moment. So the memory, thats you can think of that as your short-term memory. You're talking on the phone making a doctor's appointment, okay? The conversation is all in here. You don't have to keep up with it long uh, for a long, you just have to know that, hey, you're talking to somebody on the phone and you're getting things squared away. When you go to write that appointment down or you have to remember what that appointment is, we're talking long-term memory. This is an example of a mechanical hard drive and a solid state hard drive. The difference in the two, these are usually larger. They're mechanical, which means there's something actually spinning on the inside of it that keeps up with data. And they are less expensive now. They are larger, they are slower, but they still, they'll, they'll operate, that disc will spin five, anywhere from five to 7,000 times a minute, which is pretty quick. The solid state does a very similar job Usually it's a little bit lower capacity. They are a little bit more expensive, but they're very, very fast because there's no moving parts. It doesn't have to spin a disc around to find the information. It knows where it is and it can get to it much, much faster. Both of these do the same job or a very similar job. Now, if you're trying to speed up your computer and you want your operating system to load very quickly and say you want uh, some games to load more quickly, they might be on a solid state drive, but your songs, your movies, all of your videos, all of that stuff will be on a hard drive more often than not because that will keep up with things. You can store a lot of things on that you don't have to get back to quite as often. So this is the actual doctor's appointment. This is the conversation on having that doctor's appointment, okay? They're all powered, like I said, by a power supply that's up underneath here. It supplies power to all of these in some way or another. There's a connector on the top of the, the graphics processor. There are connectors that are on the back of the long-term memory or your hard drives, and they all work together like that. So that also produces heat. This produces heat. This produces heat. That's why I said in the enemy of your computer is heat because there's heat coming off of everything no matter what you're doing. So you wanna make sure that wherever you have your computer that it's getting air. Good fans to blow the air out or bring, air, bring air in or what have you, but you wanna make sure that uh, things that, that, especially the bigger something is, the more heat it's gonna generate, so you wanna make sure. I think I've covered pretty much everything that's in the computer. Um, when everything is together and working, there's a couple of different operating systems you can be using. Uh, it might be uh, a Linux computer, it might be a Windows computer, but we're not gonna, we'll discuss all that stuff at some other time. I just wanted to kind of go over the basics. You, you have, a computer that has a CPU, which is a simple pro central processing unit, a GPU, which is a graphics processor, the long-term memory and the short-term memory. This is, plugs into the, the motherboard itself, that's a short-term. The long-term gets mounted on a bracket or behind somewhere, and it has cables going to it. There's only one thing that we didn't cover, and you'll notice that this does not have a separate graphics card in it. And that's because sometimes you have what's called integrated graphics. You have your central processor and your graphics processor on the same chip. Uh, Intel does this, AMD does this, it's, it's very common in laptops and, and notebook computers. They do it all the time. So just because this computer doesn't have a video card in it, doesn't mean that it can't show something on the screen because they're both together on the same chip behind this fan. For the workload that this computer is gonna do, that's more than enough, it does a great job. So, like I said, I'm not going to try to talk about brand names. I'm not going to try to talk about, you know, worry you with stuff like cores and threads and capacity of hard drives or anything like that. I just wanted to go over the basics. And so we've done that. If you have any questions or you have any thoughts or, or something didn't make sense to you, please leave it in the comments below. Um, you're welcome to toss a like on it. You can welcome to share it. 
you know, like I said, thumbs up, thumbs down. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, don't, don't be afraid to subscribe. Hit that red subscribe button or the watermark that's down there in the bottom of your screen. But uh, until later, we'll, we'll go over something a little bit more complicated later maybe, but I just wanted to go back and hit the basics and make sure that everybody kind of had, uh, had an idea of when I talk about certain parts in a computer, what it was I was talking about. So that's all I got for now, folks. Uh, until next time, I'll see you later.